everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Topic Thunder. Here from the top 10. I totally forgot because we've been doing so many heavy metal brackets. I forgot that I start on that one. It's been a bit. Uh, but yeah, when we say Topic Thunder, it means we're going to answer questions from you, the patrons, who send us in your questions at the $5 and above level. Remember, that's a perk of yours. If you're a patron, please Send in your questions, thoughts, and comments. It isn't just brackets and brackets all the time. We also like to have shows like Topic Thunder where we answer your questions. Uh, and if you're not a member of the Patreon, we'll head on over to patreon.com slash the top 10 and sign up uh, for a tier that's $5 and above so you can send in your questions, thoughts, and comments. Uh, Matt, shall we start? Uh, we shall. You are starting this time, so uh, get that ball rolling. Okay, Stephen Moreno. He says, hey, guys, been listening for a long time and finally got signed up for the Patreon. Sorry it took so long. Oh, please, we just appreciate you doing it. As for my question, I've always really enjoyed a film's use of sound effects or even the lack of Holdo's maneuver in uh, The Last Jedi, the, the deafness in Sound of Metal, or a shell shock muffle in war movies. What scene sticks out to you all as a great use of sound or no sound in the movie Keep up the great work as always. Uh, Y'all are easily my favorite movie discussion podcast out there. Stev. Thank you, Stev. I think you're trying to say Steve, but if not Stev, I'll go with Stev. I kind of like Stev. Yeah, me too. Matt, your answers to this one. Uh, so a great use of a sound effect. The Holdo Maneuver is awesome. Oh my God, it's incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hands down my favorite part of that movie, even though it doesn't technically make sense, but whatever. <laughs> We're not getting into that. No. You know, uh, don't need to kick that hornet's nest again. God, no, please. <laughs> yeah, those, uh, anyway, someone got really pissed the last time that came up and I expressed my opinion. I loved it. I saw it and I was like, oh, really? Okay. Uh, Can we stop with the bashing of the last Jedi? Oh, my God. Come on. Uh, it's a full throated defense. And then basically he's like, fuck you. We're like, all right, man. <laughs> Good for you. This clearly is misdirected. This is yeah, no, yeah, no. You should not um, feel that passionate about a movie. I mean, I think I think you should love movies, but no movie is beyond yeah. approach. If no you didn't make the approach. fucking thing, yeah, exactly. Then dial it back ten notches. <laughs> He's up. He's up. Uh, yeah, it's one person's opinion. Yeah. Who fucking cares? Right, exactly. Um, I mean, but I appreciate you're passionate about it and you like of it course. and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, there's a ton of like I, I'm trying to think of. Because all that I started thinking about is I've watched the behind the scenes of how they create the sounds of Star Wars mm, and yeah. all the different uh, real world stuff that they found. And then the, the cobbling together to create yeah. that specific sounds like that is super interesting. My mind just kind of went down a little rabbit hole of watching that little behind the scenes. It's like a 15 minute, 20 minute little uh, vignette. But the one that always stuck out is on. Uh, a steel cable holding up a power line mm. and if you slap it with another wow. steel thing yeah. that's where you get the blaster part of the main chunk of the blaster sound effect oh is yeah, from yeah, that. yeah. And i was like oh that's that is interesting as shit because yeah. i've heard that sound before um yeah and then to be like oh you use that uh there for but let me think specifically like what the deafness of the sound of metal that's a good one that is a good one um I can throw in a couple if you... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah please. Yeah. I'm blanking. Uh, certainly, the other night, uh, I rewatched the last hour of 2001 A Space Odyssey, and when it goes silent at the end with the space baby leading up to... Mm -hmm. um, was it Thus Spake Zarathustra? Is that what it is? That the, I think the song they played at the end there? The yeah. Duh. Also Sprach Zarathustra. Oh, that's it. Also Sprach, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the silence of what you're experiencing and the imagery, and especially because you're watching his eyes go left to right, and he is freaking out, and all of a sudden the sound is gone. And then okay, you hear him cutting up his food, so it's very sparse. So to yeah. me, a lot of that, the sound cues, as soon as he goes into the black hole, the entire sequence of sound cues is incredible leading to that big uh, um, beat with the space baby. So I would throw that in the mix uh, for sure. Um, and I think there are some sound cues in uh, the opening of saving private Ryan, right? When they're talking about the, um, 
when the uh, explosions and the fights are happening, especially when that bomb goes off near Hanks and he's just like, it's all, it's all kind of, uh, it's affecting your hearing. And mm -hmm. Spielberg simulates that uh, as a sound cue in the film until uh, Hanks gets a little more straightened out. I think it's great. It, it really adds to the visceral feeling that you're there on the beach with the guys as you're watching the movie. Uh, let's see, recently from television, but Andor, when those TIE fighters are just flying oh, over the valley, dude, the sheer terror that that would elicit yeah. from people on the ground is such yeah. a great uh, use of simple just sound. You don't need yeah. anything else. Just that yeah. distant, the rolling thunder of a looming threat. Yeah. I, f I love that scene. I thought it was yeah. just beautifully done. Uh, yeah and just hear that and it would reverberate through the valleys yeah, yeah as yeah, they're yeah. sitting down there and they're scurrying like rats yeah. they're fearful of you know the homeowner or whatnot like in ratatouille when they just yeah. lift it up and suddenly there's thousands of rats uh let's see god why am i blanking so hard on this because <laughs> i'm trying to think of like something like the holdo where it's yeah. so yeah. dramatic yeah those are rough to find yeah uh just off the top of my head um you got anything else give me give me a moment to fucking uh yeah um i think the, in, you know the rocky sequence in rocky 2 when they're counting down one you know that whole like it's mm. real they remove everything but the little bit of, of the sound cue that is going through i think the way they work that is really cool it's not a hundred percent loss of sound but it's the sound that mixed in with the removal of the crowd screaming, the removal of all the other ambient sounds. So all you hear is the sound cue and Lou Filippo going, one. And then you cut to, you know, get up, baby, get up. So there's no sound of the crowd. So that it's almost like the they've both been punched. So in essence, they're both almost like in what we saw in Saving Private Ryan, just lost in this kind of numbness and uh, some things have been kind of shut out from their ear, from their ears. So all they're hearing is just whatever's there right in front of them. So I think the way they do that in Rocky two is fantastic to kind of build up the tension uh, of uh, them doing the count until he uh, Apollo eventually falls to the canvas. Great example. Hmm. Thank you. Um. Yeah, if this were some sort of category in a trivia competition or something, I would get an F. I would I would be getting an F right now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, because I'm thinking like uh, uh, when the heart gets ripped out in Temple of Doom and it's beating. But how oh, good yeah. is that really? You know what I mean? Right, it's right, a beating right. heart. It's yeah. still cool. And I was thinking of Braveheart when he yells out freedom, but that's not a sound effect. Right. But it's still elicited like the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. How about the sound effect? I think 2001 is a great example for so many of these kinds of sounds effects, right? You hear the heavy breathing when he's in the uh, uh, astronaut, uh, the helmet, <sighs> right? Or when you see Hal, from Hal's perspective, watching the two guys talk and Hal can't hear them, but he can read lips. And so you're seeing him go back and forth in the silence sure. and you're seeing the, I think you see the subtitles come up because Hal is reading their lips. And what so about the, that's what they're saying. The sound of pile futs him with his rifle. Oh, in that oh, bathroom yeah. because of all yeah. the tiles. So it just echoes around, but you can hear totally. the metal of the bullet casing. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. ding, 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 ding. Um, that's a great point. I it's like eerie that. as shit too. Cause it just, it feels so hollow. Yeah. And distant. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was trying to think of something in The Shining specifically, but I couldn't come up with anything off the top of my head since you started doing Kubrick. Yeah, Kubrick does a great use of sound. He really does. Well, I mean, anybody that that gets so into the weeds in their own movie and spend yeah. years upon years just doing as much research. Yeah. Like the the amount of information for the movie, the his Napoleon movie that never got off the ground, is staggering. Oh right, yeah. I mean, that's right. That's a solid decade of work that you put in. Yeah. For a project that never got off the ground. Yeah. And it's amazing. It's just you know, like old school Dewey Decimal card 
catalog thing where you can rifle through and oh yeah that's over on this now yeah um so yeah i'm trying to think of filmmakers that are that meticulous and you think someone like pt anderson but you bring up like the deafness well oh, yeah there are those moments in there will be blood yes um but i'm trying to come up with new and he brings up the the war films like someone being concussed from yeah. a, sh a shell landing or something it happens in a lot of war movies yeah like yeah. there's one of those in all quiet on the western front that just came out yeah yeah oh my god uh, that was such a good movie man yeah that was good the uh one of those dudes i'm amazed i've never seen before i thought that that guy has all the charisma in the world yeah 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 fantastic stuff which sure. is the of the like there's the friends that come into the army and then they yeah. they get folded into that group of the two guys that are kind of the veterans. Yeah, right. Yes. One of those two veterans. I was like, that dude has oh, has yeah. something. Yeah. It's like the first time I saw uh, Rami Malik in the Pacific. Mm. I was like, I don't know who that dude is, but he's got something. Yeah. Did I see Oscar? No, but I figured he was going to be somebody. Yeah. Uh, just because I was like, hey, God, he's stealing every scene just by being in it, not even having to do anything. This guy's going to do something. Could be those big, massive eyes, but he's got huge eyes. Yeah, but he's got huge eyes. They're, I mean, they, without being seemingly like he's trying to be bug eyed, they're just yeah. always like wide open and yeah, consuming the world. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, all right, so we've all, I think we've answered that question. Well, I think you answered that question, and I oh. danced around for a little okay. while. Fair enough. I feel bad because Steve, that's a great question. I I want to like spend time with it yeah and come back to you with better answers than i had so i, I failed you steve and i apologize pardon me stev stev and uh I'll, I'll i can only promise to do better that's that's what i will try that's all people want to hear man yeah all right let's move on to our next question thank you steven um you would you want to take a break real quick oh yes sure we can take a break yeah, let's you do hear it. this word from our sponsor we'll be right back after this all right, there we have it. Moving on. This one comes to us from Deepak Mauer and says, well, it's entitled Fandom Today. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. Hello, my good men. Yeah. Hope you are both. Hope you're both nothing short of fantastic. Thank you. I wanted to ask you both about how you're feeling about fandom currently. In my opinion, it's the worst it's ever been. Mm. Although I am aware that I might be falling into the trap of recency bias, but the YouTube landscape does, does feel more polarized than ever. I grow increasingly uncomfortable with the many popular YouTube channels that feed off the narrative that a slow show slash movie is bad because it is pushing a feminist slash race slash LGBT agenda. And they want their content to go back to the good old days, parenthetically, whatever the fuck that means mm. on the flip side. The major pushback to this narrative at times goes over the top two. Great example is She-Hulk. I didn't enjoy the show at all because I couldn't get on board the last episode and the humor didn't work for me. I loathe the narrative that it wasn't good because it was a female-led show. However, what I also didn't like was the narrative that if you didn't like the show, then you're a misogynist or an incel. Mm. Where has the nuance and reasonable reasonableness gone in our community? Is it perhaps one of the reasons for the immature debates we see nowadays as a result of the average demographic of the community? I sometimes forget how young the audience can be. Would love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with me or do you think I'm being too much of a cynic? All the very best to you both, you wonderful human beings. From a Brit in the Netherlands, Deepak. That may be the best reading you've ever done of an email. Genuine emotion. Good pausing, great pace, and delivering each one of his emotional beats throughout the throughout the end. Thank of the you. Letter. Yeah. Only took what eight years, <laughs> but it was well done. It was well done. Well, I outside of best ever, it doesn't mean that you weren't good before. I just that's exactly that's what you were good. saying, John. No, we all read into what you were saying. Uh, there yeah. out, outside. Wait, a lot of times, yes. you and I, we each run into syntactical and grammatical errors. Sure. Sure. So you start to read into a sentence and be like, well, this doesn't make sense. You have to go back and reprocess and right. go through. Yeah. 
and then uh, internally, I think I get my girders up, assuming uh, shit. There's going to be another one coming. Oh, so you want to be aware of it? Yeah. yeah so I'm like uh, over analyzing each sentence to make sure that it makes some sort of sen uh, mm. sense by the time I get to the end of it. Fair enough. And uh, Deepak, uh, uh, you know, crush it. So I'm yeah, just a, a reflection nice of his skill. <laughs> I am but a vessel. Oh my god. <laughs> Anyway, so let's answer his question. Listen, I'll tell you this. Uh, you're 100% right. Um, and I, you know, I sometimes wonder about it because obviously I've got a YouTube channel that I'm trying to build up and get more people behind. But I have to be honest with my analysis and my criticism. I can't look myself in the mirror and create a YouTube channel that is dependent on negativity, dependent on anti LGBT. Q stuff, mm -hmm. anti-woman stuff, anti-race stuff. I can't do it. It's not built. I'm not built to do that. I think there are people who look at it and remove the moral judgment and create channels like this and are not corroded by the negativity of it all. Some of them are corroded by it and I feel bad for them. But when I look at it and I go like, I watched a He-Man Masters of the Universe breakdown of the first five episodes when everyone was going crazy about it. A uh, year and a half ago, and the 600,000 views this thing got blew my mind because I watched it and I was like, oh, yeah, I don't think that's going to be a good He Man episode, uh, show. And then I watched the first five episodes, and the person had pick and cho picked and chosen what specific things to highlight, but had completely removed context of those mm -hmm. moments and the, um, the next thing that happened connected to those moments and created a false narrative about the first five episodes of the show. And so to me, I was like, this makes no sense at all. Yet it clearly connected with some people who are upset about this. And I think it all stems from the fact that people are just much more frustrated with their lives. I wanted to believe that it's just like, it's always been this way. We just have more access because of YouTube and the internet and social media. But I actually do think the divide between the haves and the haves nots in our society is not in a vacuum. I think it's occurring all over the place. So there's a lot of people who are frustrated with their lives, angry with their lives. They want a place to go where they can vent their anger and freedom and you know, their misguided uh, uh, frustrations with being told what to say and told what to do and being shoved female led projects being, and, and having people say the things that they loved in the past were sexist or racist or these so people get mad about that because you're fucking with people's nostalgia you're yeah. fucking with people's childhood so they're going to react in that way and it took me a while to kind of understand that because i was one of those people that was like oh yeah okay we can break down a movie and you can destroy a film that i loved but i'm still gonna love the film it's not a big deal but other people really take it personally and that's what i think is a lot of the people who watch this stuff because they're just frustrated with the way um the narrative is all going. And, and I agree on the other side, people who want to use or vilify people for not liking a female led project as immediately sexist. I think is such copped out, copping out bullshit as well, because yeah, and it, it definitely happens. No good, right. It does no good, Matt. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think both sides hmm. now give, verbiage and talking points to individuals that wouldn't have been able to hit upon those so it's easy to latch on to right um uh, just like i never would have been able to encapsulate my feelings about this and someone else has done it so now it's easy to latch on to yeah woke and just destroying something yeah. Yeah. for being woke or not being feminist enough or, or upholding the ideals on this side right or and then i think there's also the well, I usually side with this person about this issue, so I guess I'll just go ahead and go along with them on this as well. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and just kind of, well, I'm already on this side of the fence, so they're lobbing insults the other way over this. Well, I don't give a shit, so I'll still stay on my side of the fence. Right. right. Yeah, I think that polarity and division definitely exists um, to a degree that didn't before social media. Yeah. Uh, you can just rally the troops around bullshit. And people latch onto it as opposed to more pressing matters. Right. Um, and look, there are people who legitimately bring up issues with these projects or with these shows or movies. And those are the people that you should be gravitating to. The people who manufacture hate. And certainly, um, I got attacked a few weeks ago because I worded a tweet 
and not as well as I should have. And I really got to see what that experience is like at a microcosm level because I'm not anywhere near a big celebrity on social media. So I can't even imagine what it's like for a celebrity to kind of just every second of every day opening up their social media. And it's just full of people tagging them with a bunch of negative oh, people yeah. about who they are as a person, like their character. Uh, and so people were calling me racist and all this kind of stuff, and it, which was comical at best. Um, but I, but I understood that the fir- I understood for the first time what what poking that side of the community really brings out mm-hmm. in people who tweeted at me and said some of the things that they said. I was like, none of these people know me from Adam, but they're going to make an overall judgment of who I am as a person. And it's that they're just so whipped up in this frenzy that they will. They're almost like a, a laser that's being shot at wherever the person who holds the laser or which are the person who hosts these shows directs them towards. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's unfortunate because that doesn't actually lead to um, conversation, understanding, uh, finding middle ground, compromise, none of that, you know, because none of those people who came after me who host their own YouTube shows with big followings it ever reached out to me and said like, hey, I'd love to have you on the show because I didn't like what you said, but let's talk about it and see where we're at. I would have loved to have done that. But no, it was attack, 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 vilify, 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 ridicule, ridicule, ridicule. And at that point, there's no real middle ground that's going to be reached. It's just about uh, getting views to destroy somebody. Yeah, yeah, it's just it's it's feeding the outrage machine. Yes, exactly. Because exactly. it gets clicks. And right, that's right, right, right. Oh, I give a shit about. And that's a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. Now, even sometimes you see innocuous stuff. Yeah. And. Yeah, I'll read through on Twitter. It's just mm-hmm. like, hey, does you know, you think so and so is an all star this year? And then it becomes just by asking that bland a question. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> no, well, how could he be if my guy isn't? And be like, well, that's not. One doesn't have to exclude the. And then it just some of them were like, ah, oh, you know, it. Some people were trying to have a discussion about it. Like, hey, you know, I don't think so because of these reasons. And be like, okay, well, that's a reasonable response. Yeah, yeah. I may not agree with you, but at least you put some thought into it. And then just others come out swinging wildly. You're like, okay, even in this, even in this, we can't have just a general. Yeah, It's not like they said, who's better, A or B. They just said, do you think this person is deserving of? Yeah. So I go, no chance because this guy is in. They're like, we're not even talking about that guy. We're not even talking about that guy. But it bleeds down, doesn't it, Matt? Like, we even watch it on our sports shows. Like, uh, Skip and Shannon, like the other day, Shannon telling him to put his glasses, or Skip telling him to put his glasses back on, or Stephen A, when he's going at somebody. You're just like, you guys feed the beast by creating the toxicity you claim to be against. You participate. Oh, 100%. In the toxicity. So, yeah, if they ever cry wolf on that, it's like, you guys are so full of shit. Yeah, exactly. I'm always fascinated by the hypocrisy of that it's like oh things are you know the fandom sports fandom is so toxic nowadays like who the fuck are you to say that you're the one that promotes that kind of behavior like when people go after Stephen a and Stephen a is like trying to play victim i'm like get the fuck out of here you create the toxicity with which uh that gets visited upon you by being the way you are and your reaction to things so every once in again i agree with Stephen a when he lashes out at people for doing that but about 99 percent of the time it's like dude it's you made this bed. Yeah. You yeah. got to lie in it. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't, it, the discourse can devolve into just the rudest of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I think that's part and parcel with where we have trended in all social media. Mm-hmm. So it's a, naturally would bleed over to movies and television and any kind of pop culture because people all have opinions on it. Yeah. And some are unwilling to acknowledge the fact that you may have a different opinion than they do. Well, I mean, we just had a thing that happened with a couple of friends of mine who are movie critics, right? Female movie critics. Uh, One of them, she's in Philadelphia and she's, I like her reviews. She's very smart. Um, I don't want to say her name because I don't want people to kind of jump onto her, but like um, uh, jump onto her social media rather than come after. But she made a comment about Avatar, the new Avatar, right? She said, James Cameron is appropriating uh, this Polynesian culture. And a lot of the actors are white, even the extras or the uh, the behind the scenes actors who were doing the voices. And so for her, she felt that it was a bit of appropriation and they should have cast people of color or people of that descent, which I think is a valid thing to have a conversation about. It's it's a valid thing to, to talk about. It doesn't mean 
you're vilifying James Cameron. It doesn't mean you're pissing on the movie. You're bringing something up for discussion. And you used to be able to discuss these kinds of things. And now people go crazy. People went crazy. They went after her and were like, they're blue. It's not even real. It's on another world. As if Cameron isn't taking the Native American story and bringing it with Avatar and using yeah. the Navi as the Native Americans. And in this movie, using the reef people or the water people to represent the Polynesian culture, which is very much on our planet. So this idea of, of purposefully um, isolating the argument in a vacuum rather than connecting all the pieces in order to venture rage, it, it just doesn't make any sense. So I, I didn't find her tweet to be that an issue and then Newsweek even brought it up and had a conversation about it. So I'm like, yeah, great conversation to, um, to instruct or to educate, I think is a good thing, but people are just like, Oh, you're there. There goes the woke again. And it's like, well, no, no, these are valid things because by the same token, if they go with a black Superman, you all are going to lose your motherfucking minds. So what's, which way is it? It's okay for white people to play everything, but it's not okay for you to say people of color should play certain things. So it just is all so confusing when you look at it. And I don't understand why we can't just have discussions about this kind of stuff and why it always has to lead to like these tribalistic attacks or these, these, um, the, the, some of the vitriol that was being spewed at her. I was just like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, she just brought up something for discussion, you know? So. Yeah, but then it fits the narrative on both sides. So, of course, it's yeah. woke, and then the people that are saying, well, we want to bring this up, it just, boom, it just creates more churn. Yeah, 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 And yeah. kind of both sides are getting precisely what they want out of this. Yeah, yeah. It gets crazy. So, yeah, to to get back to Deepak's point, yeah, I think it's, it's certainly worse than it's ever been. Um, and I don't know the... I don't know that there's a way out anymore. I don't think so. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't seem like basically I don't know how you course correct. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that ship has sailed and unfortunately that is now you know it seems in hindsight of course it was going to end up like this. Right. Right, 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 right. But I when I first started getting on social media, like MySpace, never in a million years did I oh, think that would lead yeah. to where we're at now. Well, which I, is, mean, I understood it in sports, Matt, but I didn't understand. I don't understand it in the geek world. Like I understood it in like you go on those sports. That's why ESPN stopped doing message boards because those those message boards were some of the most. Yeah, but then then insane. ESPN puts out like here are our top ten whatever players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and they intentionally. Make it like number three is someone ridiculous. Oh, right. Yeah. It's to, to Just to create people. the outrage and get everybody talking, be like, how can you? So they still do it. Yeah, true. Very true. Very true. Um, yeah. And that's intentional. But I'm, I mean, I'm not surprised that it happens with movies and television just because people have such an attachment. And mm. if you've seen it, you have an opinion one way or another. Yeah. yeah. Even if that opinion is indifferent. That's still like, I don't know why you care so much. And that's, you're kind of lobbing, you know, your own grenade. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it sucks, Deepak. I mean, I, I don't know what exactly will change or if we're just going to keep segregating and branching off into smaller and smaller subsets. Yeah, because uh, you, you see the subsets attacking each other now. If they yeah, don't. for not being enough of one thing yeah. or another. And you're yeah. like, we can't even agree on this? It never can't ends. Even, yeah. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Oh, we agree on the large umbrella issues, but now we're fighting a nitpicking on you know the yeah. wording of how we're doing it or whatever the case is. And that's happening on both sides. Which oh, I yeah. 100%. It's crazy. You know, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's, it's someone you know brought up to me a long time ago. It's like a uh, on the left, it's like you, you're questioned how left you really are. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, why'd you make that joke? Was, wait, but I've been supportive on all these other things. Uh, on, yeah, on everything else. If doesn't you matter. If you really supportive, you wouldn't have made that joke. And it's like, why? wait, what? 
So yeah, you're right. You know, yeah, you're not angry enough on the right and you're not woke enough on the left. And it's yep. just, it's just like, what the fuck, man? Like there's, we used to have this stronger middle and, um, I think it still exists. We're just not as loud. It's not right. Right. Yeah. As, the as silent Nixon. majority yeah, is Nixonian term. The silent majority. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which I think the bulk of individuals, I know very few people that are so adamant on either side. I do know a few. Yeah. But the vast majority of individuals that I interact with are kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm this way on this and this on the other. And right, right. It's fine. I see both sides of the argument on it. And I, but I do know a couple who are just fucking this, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, oh, everything, really, everything from that side outrages you. They'd never have a good point. Exactly. I'm not saying I agree with them, but it did the, the merit of what they're saying, there's yeah. something in there. Yeah. 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 yeah I'm not going to go full Kanye uh oh know, Jesus I, Christ no yeah yeah uh, that was I mean yeah man he is in a weird place or for Billy Corgan even uh to me to a lesser extent which I found out this week I had no idea that he was a, a massive supporter of of one particular side I was just like holy shit really I had no idea so really? yeah. I, I didn't see any of that uh, yeah, so. he's got a new series coming out, a new docu series coming out. Because remember, he's—I don't know if you know this—but he's like the president or the owner of National Wrestling Alliance, the old NWA. He's been oh, really? the owner for the last few years, and now he's kind of veered into this, where he's doing a docu series where he's going to go talk to "quote unquote" real Americans about what's going on in the world, which I think is going to be a bit skewed, I would imagine. Yeah, considering his point of view. So it just like it was like, oh man, what, this is just going to feed more of the toxicity. This idea, mm -hmm. of, you know, we're the real ones. Everyone else is not. Yeah. As if this country has not one idea. But yeah, as if we haven't naturally been progressive for multiple generations and multiple. Or it, or if our identity isn't a fluid dynamic. Ex that's the better way to say it. You're yeah. absolutely right, Matt. Yeah. So there is no. It's why there's not a national language. That's why there's not a national this, that, or the other. It's just like because there's. We are ill-defined by purpose. Yeah, right, right. Uh, we're supposed to be, the Constitution is supposed to be a living document that updates through time and mm. it grows with the people and changes and morphs just like society does. Right. We're not some stagnant set in stone. This is how it was. This is how it always will be. At least that's the way I assumed they set it up because that's what it looks like, how they set it up. Yeah, I agree 100%. Yep, yep. Uh, but anyway... <laughs> but anyway, oh, um, by the way, I'm not saying I agree with my friend about the Avatar point of view. It was just more that I like I can't believe we can't even bring that up for a discussion without eliciting such reactions. So uh, that was the place that I'm coming from. Whether what, my feelings about it are much more complex than just simply one way or the other, but it was just kind of that. I just want to reiterate that in case anyone wants to clip this out. I want to clarify what I'm actually saying. So. Well, you're assuming they're going to clip the clarification as well? <laughs> well, I'm going to clip the clarification out and put it up as a counter. So if I need to, but anyway, let's get out of this minefield. Uh, thank you all so much uh, for joining us. Thank you to Deepak for that great uh, question and to Stev for his question as well. And to all our patrons, uh, we thank you enough, especially during the holiday season. We can't thank you enough as we're wrapping up the year and as we're uh, entering into 2023, we want to thank you very much for staying on the Top 10 train and staying a patron of the Top 10 as well. So, And if you haven't done that, you can always go to patreon.com slash the top 10. And $5 and above gets to send in their questions, thoughts, and comments. And clearly, as we've shown you, we don't really reject many of them. We like to talk about stuff. So, Anything else I need to say? Um, you can join us at uh, patreon.com forward slash the top 10 on Twitter. It's at top 10 show all split up on Instagram and YouTube. It's forward slash the top 10 podcast with the number 10. You can follow me anywhere at Matt Nost. You can follow me at the Roka says, all right, y'all take care of yourselves. Be well. And we'll talk to you next time with another brand new episode of topic thunder. thunder.